A light meter is a device used to measure the amount of light. In photography, a light meter is often used to determine the proper exposure for a photograph. Typically a light meter will include either digital or analog electronic circuit, which allows the photographer to determine which shutter speed and f-number should be selected for an optimum exposure, given a certain lighting situation and film speed. Light meters are also used in the fields of cinematography and scenic design, in order to determine the optimum light level for a scene. They are used in the general field of architectural lighting design to verify proper installation and performance of a building lighting system, and in assessing the light levels for growing plants. Use in photography The earliest type of light meters were called extinction meters and contained a numbered or lettered row of neutral density filters of increasing density. The photographer would position the meter in front of his subject and note the filter with the greatest density that still allowed incident light to pass through. The letter or number corresponding to the filter was used as an index into a chart of appropriate aperture and shutter speed combinations for a given film speed. Extinction meters suffered from the problem that they depended on the light sensitivity of the human eye which can vary from person to person and subjective interpretation. Later meters removed the human element and relied on technologies incorporating selenium, CDs, and silicon photodetectors. Selenium and silicon light meters use sensors that are photovoltaic, they generate a voltage proportional to light exposure. Selenium sensors generate enough voltage for direct connection to a meter, they need no battery to operate, and this made them very convenient in completely mechanical cameras. Selenium sensors however cannot measure low light accurately ordinary light bulbs can take them close to their limits and are altogether unable to measure very low light, such as candlelight, moonlight, starlight etc. Silicon sensors need an amplification circuit and require a power source such as batteries to operate. CDs light meters use a photoresistor sensor whose electrical resistance changes proportionately to light exposure. These also require a battery to operate. Most modern light meters use silicon or CDs sensors. They indicate the exposure either with a needle galvanometer or on an LCD screen. Many modern consumer still and video cameras include a built-in meter that measures a scene-wide light level and are able to make an approximate measure of appropriate exposure based on that. Photographers working with controlled lighting and cinematographers use handheld light meters to precisely measure the light falling on various parts of their subjects and use suitable lighting to produce the desired exposure levels. There are two general types of light meters, reflected light and incident light. Reflected light meters measure the light reflected by the scene to be photographed. All in-camera meters are reflected light meters. Reflected light meters are calibrated to show the appropriate exposure for average scenes. An unusual scene with a preponderance of light colors or specular highlights would have a higher reflectance. A reflected light meter taking a reading would incorrectly compensate for the difference in reflectance and lead to underexposure. Badly underexposed sunset photos are common exactly because of this effect. The brightness of the setting sun fools the camera's light meter, and, unless the in camera logic or the photographer take care to compensate, the picture will be grossly underexposed and dull. This pitfall but not in the setting sun case, is avoided by incident light meters which measure the amount of light falling on the subject using an integrating sphere usually, a translucent hemispherical plastic dome is used to approximate this, placed on top of the light sensor. Because the incident light reading is independent of the subject's reflectance, it is less likely to lead to incorrect exposures for subjects with unusual average reflectance. 
Taking an incident light reading requires placing the meter at the subject's position and pointing it in the general direction of the camera, something not always achievable in practice, e.g., in landscape photography where the subject distance approaches infinity. Another way to avoid under or over exposure for subjects with unusual reflectance is to use a spot meter, a reflected light meter that measures light in a very tight cone, typically with a one degree circular angle of view. An experienced photographer can take multiple readings over the shadows, midrange and highlights of the scene to determine optimal exposure, using systems like the zone system. Many modern cameras include sophisticated multi-segment metering systems that measure the luminance of different parts of the scene to determine the optimal exposure. When using a film whose spectral sensitivity is not a good match to that of the light meter, for example orthochromatic black and white or infrared film, the meter may require special filters and recalibration to match the sensitivity of the film. There are other types of specialized photographic light meters. Flash meters are used in flash photography to verify correct exposure. Color meters are used where high fidelity in color reproduction is required. Densitometers are used in photographic reproduction. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Exposure meter calibration. In most cases, an incident light meter will cause a medium tone to be recorded as a medium tone, and a reflected light meter will cause whatever is metered to be recorded as a medium tone. What constitutes a medium tone depends on meter calibration and several other factors, including film processing or digital image conversion. Meter calibration establishes the relationship between subject lighting and recommended camera settings. The calibration of photographic light meters is covered by ISO 2720-1974. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Exposure equations. For reflected light meters, camera settings are related to ISO speed and subject luminance by the reflected light exposure equation N 2 T equals L S K displaystyle frac N carrot 2 T equals frac L S K where N Display style n is the relative aperture f number t. Display style t is the exposure time shutter speed in seconds. L display style l is the average scene luminance. S display style s is the ISO arithmetic speed. K Display style K is the reflected light meter calibration constant for incident light meters. Camera settings are related to ISO speed and subject illuminance by the incident light exposure equation N two T equals E S C Display style frac n carrot two t equals frac s c, where e display style e is the illuminance c display style c is the incident light meter calibration constant. Topic: Calibration constants. Determination of calibration constants has been largely subjective. ISO 2720 to 1974 states that the constants k, display style k, and 
C display style C shall be chosen by statistical analysis of the results of a large number of tests carried out to determine the acceptability to a large number of observers of a number of photographs for which the exposure was known obtained under various conditions of subject matter and over a range of luminances in practice the variation of the calibration constants among manufacturers is considerably less than this statement might imply and values have changed little since the early 1970s ISO 2720 to 1974 recommends a range for k display style k of 10.6 to 13.4 with luminance in candela per square meter two values for k display style k are in common use 12.5 Canon Nikon and Saconic and 14 Minolta Kenko and Pentax the difference between the two values is approximately one sixth ev the earliest calibration standards were developed for use with wide angle averaging reflected light meters Jones and Condit 1941 Although wide angle average metering has largely given way to other metering sensitivity patterns, e.g., spot, center weighted, and multi segment, the values for K determined for wide angle averaging meters have remained. The incident light calibration constant depends on the type of light receptor. Two receptor types are common, flat cosine responding and hemispherical cardioid responding. With a flat receptor, ISO 2720 to 1974 recommends a range for C display style C of 240 to 400 with Illuminance in lux, a value of 250 is commonly used. A flat receptor typically is used for measurement of lighting ratios, for measurement of illuminance, and occasionally, for determining exposure for a flat subject. For determining practical photographic exposure, a hemispherical receptor has proven more effective. Don Norwood, inventor of incident light exposure meter with a hemispherical receptor, thought that a sphere was a reasonable representation of a photographic subject. According to his patent, Norwood 1938, the objective was to provide an exposure meter which is substantially uniformly responsive to light incident upon the photographic subject from practically all directions which would result in the reflection of light to the camera or other photographic register and the meter provided for measurement of the effective illumination obtaining at the position of the subject. With a hemispherical receptor, ISO 2720-1974 recommends a range for C display style C of 320 to 540 with illuminance in lux in practice values typically are between 320 Minolta and 340 Saconic the relative responses of flat and hemispherical receptors depend upon the number and type of light sources when each receptor is pointed at a small light source a hemispherical receptor with c display style c equals 330 will indicate an exposure approximately 0.40 step greater than that indicated by a flat receptor with c display style c equals 250 
with a slightly revised definition of illuminance measurements with a hemispherical receptor indicate effective scene illuminance topic calibrated reflectance It is commonly stated that reflected light meters are calibrated to an 18% reflectance, but the calibration has nothing to do with reflectance, as should be evident from the exposure formulas. However, some notion of reflectance is implied by a comparison of incident and reflected light meter calibration. Combining the reflected light and incident light exposure equations and rearranging gives L E equals K C display style frac L E equals frac K C reflectance R display style R is defined as R equals Flux emitted from surface, flux incident upon surface. Display style R equals frac m box flux emitted from surface m box flux incident upon surface. A uniform perfect diffuser, one following Lambert's cosine law of luminance L. Display style L emits a flux density of pi. Display style pi L display style L reflectance then is R equals pi L E equals pi K C display style R equals frac pi L E equals frac pi K C Illuminance is measured with a flat receptor. It is straightforward to compare an incident light measurement using a flat receptor with a reflected light measurement of a uniformly illuminated flat surface of constant reflectance. Using values of 12.5 for K and 250 for C display style C gives R equals pi times 12.5 250 approximately equals 15.7 percent display style R equals frac pi times 12.5 250 approximately 15.7 percent with a K display style K of 14 the reflectance would be 17.6 percent close to that of a standard 18 percent neutral test card in theory an incident light Measurement should agree with a reflected light measurement of a test card of suitable reflectance that is perpendicular to the direction to the meter. However, a test card seldom is a uniform diffuser, so incident and reflected light measurements might differ slightly. In a typical scene, many elements are not flat and are at various orientations to the camera, so that for practical photography, a hemispherical receptor usually has proven more effective for determining exposure. Using values of 12.5 for K and 334 C gives R equals pi times 12.5 330 approximately equals 11.9 percent display style r equals frac pi times 12.5 330 approximately 11.9 percent 
With a slightly revised definition of reflectance, this result can be taken as indicating that the average scene reflectance is approximately 12%. Typical scene includes shaded areas as well as areas that receive direct illumination, and a wide angle averaging reflected light meter responds to these differences in illumination as well as differing reflectances of various scene elements. Average scene reflectance then would be average scene reflectance equals average scene luminance effective scene illuminance display style m box average scene reflectance equals frac m box average scene luminance m box effective scene illuminance where effective scene illuminance is that measured by a meter with a hemispherical receptor ISO 2720 to 1974 calls for reflected light calibration to be measured by aiming the receptor at a transilluminated diffuse surface, and for incident light calibration to be measured by aiming the receptor at a point source in a darkened room. For a perfectly diffusing test card and perfectly diffusing flat receptor, the comparison between a reflected light measurement and an incident light measurement is valid for any position of the light source. However, the response of a hemispherical receptor to an off-axis light source is approximately that of a cardioid rather than a cosine, so the 12% reflectance determined for an incident light meter with a hemispherical receptor is valid only when the light source is on the receptor axis. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Cameras with internal meters. Calibration of cameras with internal meters is covered by ISO 2721-1982 Nonetheless, many manufacturers specify though seldom state exposure calibration in terms of K and many calibration instruments e.g., Kairitsu Arrow and Multifunction Camera Testers use the specified K to set the test parameters. <laughs> Exposure determination with a neutral test card If a scene differs considerably from a statistically average scene, a wide angle averaging reflected light measurement may not indicate the correct exposure. To simulate an average scene, a substitute measurement sometimes is made of a neutral test card, or gray card. At best, a flat card is an approximation to a three dimensional scene and measurement of a test card may lead to underexposure unless adjustment is made. The instructions for a Kodak neutral test card recommend that the indicated exposure be increased by one half step for a frontlighted scene in sunlight. The instructions also recommend that the test card be held vertically and faced in a direction midway between the sun and the camera. Similar directions are also given in the Kodak Professional Photo Guide. The combination of exposure increase and the card orientation gives recommended exposures that are reasonably close to those given by an incident light meter with a hemispherical receptor when metering with an off-axis light source. In practice, additional complications may arise. Many neutral test cards are far from perfectly diffuse reflectors, and specular reflections can cause increased reflected light meter readings that, if followed, would result in underexposure. It is possible that the neutral test card instructions include a correction for specular reflections. Topic. 
Use in illumination Light meters or light detectors are also used in illumination. Their purpose is to measure the illumination level in the interior and to switch off or reduce the output level of luminaires. This can greatly reduce the energy burden of the building by significantly increasing the efficiency of its lighting system. It is therefore recommended to use light meters in lighting systems, especially in rooms where one cannot expect users to pay attention to manually switching off the lights. Examples include hallways, stairs, and big halls. There are, however, significant obstacles to overcome in order to achieve a successful implementation of light meters in lighting systems, of which user acceptance is by far the most formidable. Unexpected or too frequent switching and too bright or too dark rooms are very annoying and disturbing for users of the rooms. Therefore, different switching algorithms have been developed. Difference algorithm, where lights are switched on at a lower light level than they switch off, thus taking ensuring the difference between the light level of the on state and off state is not too big. Time delay algorithms. A certain amount of time must pass since the last switch. A certain amount of time at a sufficient illumination level must pass. Topic other uses in scientific research and development uses a light meter consists of a radiometer the electronics readout a photodiode or sensor generates an output when exposed to electromagnetic radiation light a filter used to modify the incoming light so only the desired portion of incoming radiation reaches the sensor and a cosine correcting input optic assures the sensor can see the light coming in from all directions accurately when the word light meter or photometer is used in place of radiometer or optometer, or it is often assumed the system was configured to see only visible light. Visible light sensors are often called illuminance or photometric sensors because they have been filtered to be sensitive only to 400 to 700 nanometers nanometer, mimicking the human eye's sensitivity to light. How accurately the meter measures often depends on how well the filtration matches the human eye's response. The sensor will send a signal to the meter that is proportional to the amount of light that reaches the sensor after being collected by the optics and passing through the filter. The meter then converts the incoming signal typically current or voltage from the sensor into to a reading of calibrated units such as foot candles FC or lux lumen per square meter. Calibration in FC or lux, is the second most important feature of a light meter. It not only converts the signal from V or Ma, but it also provides accuracy and unit-to-unit -unit repeatability. National Institute of Standards and Technology NIST traceability and ISO IEC 17025 accreditation are two well-known terms that verify the system includes a valid calibration. The meter, radiometer, photometer portion may have many features including zero subtracts ambient background light levels or stabilize the meter to the working environment hold freezes the value on the display. Range, for systems that are not linear and auto-ranging this function allows the user to select the portion of the meter electronics that best handles the signal level in use. Units, for illuminance the units are typically only lux and foot candles but many light meters can also be used for UV, VIS and IR applications so the readout could change to W per square centimeter, candela, watts etc. Integrate, sums up the values into a dose or exposure level i.e. lux asterisk sec or j per square centimeter. Along with having a variety of features, a light meter may also be usable for a variety of applications. These may include the measurement of other bands of light such UVA, UVB, UVC and near IR. 
For example, UVA and UVB light meters are used for phototherapy or treatment of skin conditions. Germicidal radiometers are used for measuring the UVC level from lamps used for disinfection and sterilization. Luminance meters are used to measure the brightness of a sign, display, or exit sign. PAR quantum sensors measure how much of a light source's emission will help plants grow, and UV curing radiometers test how much of the light's emission is affected for hardening a glue or plastic. Some light meters also have the ability to read out in a many different units. Lux and foot candles are the common units for visible light, but so are candela, lumens and candela per square meter. UVC is typically measured in watts per square centimeter, and watts and whereas systems used to measure for curing often read out in joules per square centimeter. Though a light meter can be a very simple tool with one button operation, there are also many advanced light measurement systems available for use for hundreds of different applications. Topic: See also Selenium meter Photometer, photodetector Colorimetry, photometry, radiometry Light value Photomultiplier tubes for detecting light at very low levels Pin diode solid state electronic devices for detecting incident light <laughs> Notes <laughs>